Hello friends, welcome again to my channel and today in this session we will discuss different types of solids and then in subsequent lectures I will tell you how to draw projections of these solids. So a solid is a three dimensional object and therefore it has length, width and the height. So it is different from plane figures. In case of plane figure you have the length and the width only. Plane figure is a two dimensional object whereas in solids you have a third dimension also that is the height and that makes projection of solids a bit difficult. There are two types of solids one solids having faces and the other solids of revolution. Now solids having faces can be either a polyhedron, a prism or a pyramid. Poly means many and in mathematics hadron means face. So a solid which have number of faces is called polyhedron. So a polyhedron is a solid bounded by planes which are called its faces. When all faces of the polyhedron are equal and regular polygon, it is said to be a regular polyhedron. And when the axis of the solid is perpendicular to the base, then it is called a right solid. So right regular solid means that the axis is perpendicular to the base and regular means that all faces are regular polygon. So polyhedron can be either tetrahedron, a hexahedron, octahedron, dodecahedron and icosahedron. Tetra means 4, so it has 4 faces, hexa means 6, it has 6 faces, octa means 8, dodeca means 12 and icosa means 20. So these are different types of polyhedron. A tetrahedron has four equal faces and each face is an equilateral triangle. For example, this one A, B, C, D. Now there are four equilateral triangles one, two, three, and the fourth is on the back side. Hexahedron is a cube when you have six squares, a solid bounded by six square faces is called hexahedron and there may be several examples of cube in real in real life but all of them have six faces a b c d e and f these are six faces and all are squares octahedron has eight equal faces and each face is a equilateral triangle. So if you open this solid it will look like this that you have eight equilateral triangles and when they are closed that gives a form of octahedron. Similarly dodecahedron has 12 equal faces and each face is a regular pentagon like this. These are the examples of dodecahedron. You have each face here a regular pentagon. Each face here a regular pentagon. And finally, icosahedron has 20 equal faces and each is a equilateral triangle. And as you can observe, as the number of faces increases, these solids take the shape of a sphere. And therefore, all these hadron, polyhedron, they can be inscribed in a sphere. The second type of solid is prism. And prism is formed when you have two equal and parallel faces, which are called its ends or bases, and they are joined by side faces which are rectangular. So these end faces can be a square, a pentagon or maybe a hexagon, maybe a octagon. It can take any shape. But the number of vertical faces or side faces 
will be equal to the number of sides of the base and each vertical face here will be a rectangle. The imaginary line joining the centers of the end faces is called the axis of the solid and this axis is shown by this kind of line. A long line, a dot, a long line, a dot, a long line, a dot. Then another form of solid is a pyramid. A polygon as a base and side faces as triangles. So this is a hexagonal pyramid where you have a regular hexagon at the base and six isosceles triangles as the side faces. Similarly, you can have a square pyramid where the base is a square and you have four isosceles triangles as the faces. And here also the line joining the centers of the base and the vertex. Now this point here is called apex or the vertex and the line joining this vertex with the center of the base is called the axis of the solid. Then second category of the solid is the solids of revolution. And in this category, there are three types of solids. One is sphere, the cylinder and the cone. A sphere is obtained by revolving a semicircle about its diameter. Like this, that you have a semicircle here and if you rotate the semicircle about a diameter, you get a sphere. And cylinder, cylinder is formed by moving a straight line, which is the generator here, in contact with a fixed circle, which is the base, and always keeping it parallel to a fixed straight line, which is the center or X is the solid. Or in short, you can say that a cylinder is formed when a rectangle is revolved around its long edge. This is the radius of the base and this is the height of the solid. This is the height of the solid and that is the diameter of the base and the line joining the top face and bottom face which are two circles is the axis of the solid and is the curved surface. A cone is obtained by moving a straight line which is a slant face here in contact with the fixed circle which is the base and passing through a fixed point that is called the vertex or the apex. Or you can say that when a right angle triangle is revolved around this long edge then a cone is formed. Now again here also this is the radius of the base, this is the height of the solid or the cone and this is called the slant height L that is the slant height. This is the apex or the vertex and that is the base. And here also the line joining the apex with the center of the base is called the axis of the solid. Now when you draw a projection of solids on horizontal plane or vertical plane or inclined plane, there are certain points which we should keep in mind to have the correct projection. And the first point is that a visible edge is shown by a continuous line and a hidden edge by a dotted line. Now this is important. The lines or the edges which are not visible to the observer, they are shown by dotted lines. And the edges which are visible, they are shown by continuous line. For example, here, if you place a square prism in the horizontal plane and you look from the front, for elevation, then these edges are visible to the observer and therefore these are shown by the dotted line. But the face which is behind the observer or behind the object, this is not visible, this edge is not visible FB or AB and BC and therefore these are shown by dotted lines. The second rule of projection is that two firm lines or two dotted lines cannot cross each other. Say here, two firm lines 
or two dotted lines cannot cross each other and therefore if two lines cross each other in projection then one of them will be firm another will be dotted same is here these two lines bf and hg they cross each other and this is visible this is not visible therefore one of them will be dotted another will be firm line and the third point is that a continuous line overlaps a dotted line Again in this figure, if you place a square prism in the horizontal plane, then this base A, B, C, D is in the horizontal plane and this base E, F, G, H is immediately above A, B, C, D. When you look from the top for the plan, this face is visible to the observer and this face is not visible. Therefore, E, F will be a firm line, A, B will be a dotted line. But in projection, you will show only EF line overlapping AB or EH line overlapping AD or GH overlapping CD because CD is dotted when you see from the top, when you see in the plan, CD is not visible, GH is visible and therefore finally we will show GH in the projection. So that is the meaning of this, a continuous line overlaps a dotted line. And fourth point is that all the lines meeting at a corner must be either firm lines or dotted lines. However, a corner located at the boundary of the projection can have combination of firm and dotted lines. Now this point needs little more explanation. All lines meeting at a corner, this corner for example D, here three lines are meeting CD, HD and DA. And because this is the corner, when you look from the front side, visible to the observer and therefore all these edges will be visible to the observer. And therefore all these edges will be firm lines. But this corner is not visible to the observer when you look from the front side. And therefore all lines meeting at this will be dotted lines. But a corner located at the boundary of the projection can have combination of firm and dotted lines. Now this is the corner which is located boundary of projection F. So this corner can have combination of firm line and dotted line. So I will explain this point little more uh, in a while but there are four steps to be followed in projection of solids and these steps should be followed in this sequence only that after projection of the corners of the solid draw the boundary of the projection let us say you place the solid in this position in the horizontal plane and you get eight points in the elevation a b c d e f g h so the first step is that after projecting the corners of the solid, corner are 8 corners here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Draw the boundary of the projection. Now here boundary of the projection is, if you start from A, A, E, F, G, C, D, A. That means the point, the, the outermost point of the projection is the boundary of the projection. So A, E, F, G, C, D, A is the boundary of projection. Once you do that, find the corner nearest to the observer. Now again, if you look from the front side for elevation, this is the corner which is very near to the, or this is the corner nearest to the observer. And therefore, all the lines meeting at this corner must be the firm lines. So all lines meeting at D must be firm lines. All lines meeting at H must be firm lines. So these are three edges here. These are three edges here. Find out if any line crosses the above lines. Now these are the lines which crosses this firm line. This firm line. Therefore this must be this must be the dotted line because I told you two firm lines cannot cross each other. Now B is the corner which is not visible. Now this edge. This edge BF crosses GH and GH is firm line because H is visible and therefore BF will be dotted line.
complete the projection and see that projections of all the corners and the lines have been drawn. Now these are four steps to be followed while drawing the projections of the solids. Now let me just go to the whiteboard and explain these four points in more detail so that you do not face any problem when you draw projection of solid in any position. I will take two examples just to illustrate these points. This is the cube. This is the cube. Now let us say top face is A, B, C, D and the bottom face is E, F, G, H. When you place this solid in the horizontal plane and look from the top for plan, then this face is visible to the observer and this lower face is not visible. So in the plan, what we will show a square, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Now A, B, C, D is the top face which is firm, which is shown by the firm lines A square and the bottom face is invisible, hidden, which is dotted line and therefore Final projection, final plan will be shown as the firm line because firm line overlaps a dotted line. This is one point. Second point is that suppose you have a pyramid, a square pyramid, which is placed in such a manner that the base is on inclined plane like this. And then you see from the top for the plan. So these are the five points in the plan which you got. How did you get that we will discuss in our subsequent lectures. But here you take that these are the five projections, five points of the five corners, A, B, C, D and the apex, vertex. This is the vertex O. A, B, C, D are four points of the base. Now when you draw projection, the first step is to draw the boundary of the projection. Boundary means the line joining the outermost point. Now outermost point here is O1, B1, C1, D1 and O1. That is the projection. This is the boundary of the projection. Now A1 is inside the boundary and you see here A1 when you look from the top here for the plan, this is the corner which is the lowest most and therefore it is not visible to the observer and therefore all lines meeting at this point must be hidden lines that is dotted lines and what are the lines A, D, A, B and O1, A1. These are three edges okay A, B, A, D and O, A. These are not visible. Now let us see if there is any edge or any line which crosses these dotted lines. O1, C1 is one line and therefore two lines crossing each other cannot be firm lines or dotted lines. One of them will be firm line, other will be dotted line and therefore this O1, C1 will be the firm line. That is how it will finally look like. So that is how these four rules are followed in projection, in drawing the projection of solids. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write suggestion in the comment box.